Ez az ászló amúgy azért van itt, mert ö, ma július 4 van, és ö, ennek apropójából akkor el is indítanám a következő részt, amiben pedig szeretném a, a tábori ö, személyzetet bemutatni, két részben valószínű, az egyikbe külön szedném a support staff illetve a, a következő pedig a, ez a counselor, ö, illetve egyéb pozíciókkal folytatnám. Ö, meglátjuk, hogy hogy tudom ö, ezeket megvalósítani, ugyanúgy ezeket is a szünetem, szünetjeimbe próbálom majd megcsinálni. Illetve ezt valószínűleg ezt egész hetet körül fogja ölelni, úgyhogy lehet, hogy ö, megint ilyen bevágásokkal fogok operálni. Meglátjuk, ki tudok majd elcsípni. Ö, ugye most nagyon sokan össze-vissza vannak, a, akár most a július 4 kapcsolatban, külön a d és a többi és a többi. Úgyhogy ö, nem is akarom nagyon hosszúra húzni. Ö, indítsuk el az epizódot, de még mielőtt belemennénk, lesz egy ilyen kis ünnepelés a dányokból, hogy még ezt előtte nézzük meg. Ezért szeretem a július 4 mert mindig van ugyan fagy és elég jó minőségű. Úgyhogy... Na igazából ennyi. Intro. Na, most, hogy ezzel is meg vagyunk, gyors megpróbálom elcsípni Michael-t, ő az egyik igazgató a táborba. Nálunk az úgy néz ki, amúgy, hogy ez egy privát tábor, és az Etra család birtokolja, illetve ők, ők igazgatják a tábort. Szóval Michael ő az egyik ikerpárnak a fia, szóval megpróbálom őket is elcsípni, az idősebbeket, illetve őt is, és, és meglátjuk, hogy mennyire lesz ideje. Uh, igazából ő az ilyen boyside-os dolgokat csinálja, szóval a, a gyerekeknek a programjait koordinálja. Uh, csak azért akarom őket is megszólaltatni, hogy lássátok, hogy uh, mégis uh, más perspektíva is, mint, uh, mint maga csak a kanszlerök, úgyhogy uh, úgy, megpróbálom őt elcsípni. So, I'm uh, here with Michael, one of the directors of the camp. Uh, thank you for participating in the video. Thanks for asking me. Um, so, uh, what's your usual day uh, like? Uh, what to do in a camp? Like, how does like an average day of you look like? There is no average day, Roland. I know. You uh, you see me running here, running there. I'm always late. I never know what's gonna you know happen on the campus. What's gonna happen with parents, with campers, with staff. Um, there are certain things that have to happen as part of running any business, but. Um, Usually I'll start my day on the boys' side of camp. Um, we have lineup, then we're out to activities, or I'm in the office making phone calls or you know, walking around, making sure things are going the way they should. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Follow-ups, these kinds of things. Checking in with campers to see mm -hmm. how they're doing. Maybe we have some campers who are missing home. Maybe some campers who aren't feeling well. I'll stop by the health center to see how kids are doing. Gotcha. Um, and that's, you know, then we do the same thing in the afternoon. And now, like a night like tonight, we have a special event for Fourth of July, mm -hmm. which yeah. is a lot of fun, and, and we're looking forward to it. Yeah, all right. So, do you have any uh, favorite camp memory of all time or something like that? Um, a favorite camp memory of all time? Well, I was a color war general here back in 1998, and that was a pretty, pretty oh. special thing. So, that was a lot of fun. But more recently, I think that the most fun for me is our humanitarian award, mm -hmm. um, where we give out a couple of times during the summer to really you know, spectacular kids, kids who, who, you know, positively impact our community here, you know, mm -hmm. our, our, our camp world. And I like watching, um, we give away special uh, uh, long sleeve black t-shirts to them with the humanitarian and the, and the, you know, you can see the, um, 
uh, you know, the logo up there. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of funny because every prior year, the prior winners from last summer, two summers, they're wearing with their shirt. So they get older and the short, the shirts get shorter and shorter, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? So, but it's really nice to see that. So I, I, I like that part. If you can choose any positions in the camp, what would you choose? Any uh, special areas? Like, any... like, like for me to, to do if yeah. I wasn't doing what I'm doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. What area, what sport, <clears throat> what uh, well, activity? I, I like being with the kids. You know, you work all year, you know, to prepare for, for what's going on out here now, mm -hmm. you know, with, with the staff hiring and speaking with parents. And, I you know, I love just being around the kids and helping to, you know, listen, we get to be their parents mm -hmm. for seven weeks. So I wouldn't say there's any any necessarily any activity. Mm -hmm. I love the water park the most. Yeah, yeah, But You would work as a I'd lifeguard? Like, uh, no, no, I would not work as a lifeguard. I'm not a very <laughs> good swimmer. So that would be bad for the kids. Mm -hmm. So, um, I but I like going on the water park as a participant. Yeah, but yeah. for me, it's really being around the staff, you know, the counselors, and, and seeing, you know, our campers grow up to mm -hmm. become counselors. I get it. Uh, all right, last question. Sure. Um, what would you recommend for someone who wants to participate in this program as like a working like employee, like a counselor or a support staff or something like that? What would I recommend? Like, why, why would you um, yeah, recommend oh, for someone why? to oh, participate? Oh, yeah, I mean, that's a fabulous question. It's because I would say that people come here and they end up staying here. Take you for example, yeah, right? Yeah. How long you've been here for? It's my uh, fourth. A exactly, so people come back year after year, summer after summer, because they feel like they're part of something bigger, something special, they feel like they're part of a family. And and I think that that's the most important thing that anybody should hopefully take away um, from this, that once they come here, they become um, an extension of, of our family. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, they become you know our family. Yeah, and also like they can improve their English, having like long lasting. Well, I mean, you know, for for that, you, you're you're also gonna imp not only English and get to see things here that you don't ever get to see throughout the world, but you really learn to build relationship skills and communication skills. Forget the English language. I'm just talking about being able to hold a conversation, an intelligent conversation, a meaningful conversation with other people. Yeah. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. So That's what we do I, here, man. I, I can all agree. Oh uh, yeah. So. That's it, Michael. Thank you, Roland. Like a couple you of are awesome. short questions. Thank you. Um, so see you around. Yes, later. you will, brother. Thank All right. you. Thanks, my man. All right. No, ez is meg vagyunk. Um, sajnos Rikit nem tudtam elcsípni, de majd talán a következő napokban. Um, addig is még azt nem csinálom meg. Um, kicsit beszélnek arról, hogy mi is a maga a témája a videónak, ugye? Ebben a részben a magáról ugye a kanszlerek illetve az egyéb pozíciókról uh, beszélnék. Ha már egyéb pozíció, nyilván táboronként eltér, hogy milyen külön speciális sportok, helyek, infrastruktúrális dolgok vannak, ami külön pozíciókat igényel. Most nyilván, tehát nálunk ugye van, mit tudom én, infirmary, nyilván oda nővérek kerülnek, doktorok, Nyilván van, aki, amit mondtam is, hogy az office-ba dolgozik, tehát ö, ö, az talán közelebb áll a support staffhoz, de aki nem support staffként dolgozik az office-ba, ők, ö, ők, is, ö, ők is azért egy ö, magasabb pozíciót csinálnak. Hát, tehát vannak ilyen nagyon-nagyon egyedi esetek, de a többsége ugye support staffként és counselorként fog tevékenykedni, és akkor, ha már counselor, ugye a Camp Leaders nagyon sokat beszél a a pozíciókról, illetve magáról a táborról. Én nem is szeretném részletezni. Nagyjából csak annyi, hogy ugyebár vannak a general counselorok, akiknek ugye az a feladata, mint ugye nálunk is, hogy gyerekekre vigyázzanak. Általában nekik nincs semmilyen specialitásuk, tehát ők általánosan csak ezt csinálják. Programokra kísérgetik a gyerekeket. És ezen felül, nyilván ez az ilyen, az ilyen alapkategória counselornél, Ugye azt fontos elmondani, hogy ha counselornek jelentkezel, akkor az angol tudásodnak nagyon jónak kell lennie. Nyilván itt azért felelősséget válasz, a, vagy egyetlen nagyobb a felelősséged így a, a, a gyerekek iránt, mondjuk egy ilyen support staffként. Ezen kívül ö, léteznek ö, specialistek, akik ö, különböző területekért felelnek, mint például mondjuk waterfront, mondjuk lifeguardok, ö, 
például uh, outdoor adventure, mondjuk ilyen falmászás, stb. Uh, sportok, kosár, baseball, összes sportnak van valamilyen special -je. Általában úgy néznek ki amúgy a a counselor, hogy legtöbbik valamilyen specialist, szóval um, mivel nagyon sok activity van, ezért legalább egy ilyen egy csoportnak mondjuk van kettő, három uh, specialistje, ezért például, hogyha van valamilyen activity, vagy szoktak ilyen, uh, ilyen day off -okra, vagy night off -okra menni, amikor így uh, ilyen különböző shiftekben szabadabban, uh, um, tehát szabad idejükben tudnak bármit csinálni, akkor a másik át tudja venni például a feladatát. Uh, ezek az ilyen alapok, nyilván vannak ezen kívül group leaderek, akik összefogják ezeket a nagyobb csoportokat, mondjuk egy ilyen bankot, vagy, vagy egy ilyen, nem tudom, 3-4 hasonló korosztályú gyerekcsoportot, és nyilván ezeken fölül meg vannak például nálunk ezek a boyside, van aki a boyside-ot igazgatja, például ugye Michael is, akivel beszéltem, a girl side ot szóval aki meg így teljesen összefogja az egészet, szóval egy ilyen kis ágrajzba szépen lassan így mennek föl, és egyre kevesebb pozíció lesz, és akkor utána nyilván fölötte meg már az ilyen programkoordinátorok lesznek, igazgatók, és igazából ennyi. Ha már ugye a counselor beszéltünk, ugye fontos megemlíteni, hogy de lehet, hogy erről fogok is beszélni, meg lehet, hogy az interjúkban is benne lesz, de inkább többször mondja már, mint, mint egyszer se hogy uh, itt azért ez egy uh, hosszabb ideig megterhelő, kevés megterhelő munka, szóval uh, próbálok majd elcsípni talán két embert, akik uh, counselor is, vagy azok voltak, és majd ők, hát igazából ők el tudják mondani az élményeiket, de amiket én tudok így counselor uh, talán mondani, az, hogy uh, itt azért 24 be ott kell lenni a gyerekekkel, Velük kell kelni, velük kell feküdni, általában ugye a gyerekekkel együtt alszanak, szóval minden activity azért vigyázzat kell rájuk, hogyha ha nincs kedved akkor is. Itt azért egy ilyen kis minimális pszichológus és pedagógus munkát kell végezned, sokszor ki vannak vele a gyerekek, és azért nagyon, nagyon sokszor honvágyuk van, meg haza akarnak menni, stb. És akkor ezáltal ilyenkor a a a nagyobb nyomás helyez, helyezkedik, hogy ilyenkor vigasztalni kell őket. És nyilván ez, ez valakinek jobban megy, valakinek kevésbé. Ö, minden mellett nagyon sok szépsége is van, szóval sokkal kevésbé megterve, mint mondjuk egy szuporszáv pozíció, lehet, hogy nem tudom, 8 órát kint kell a maintenance-be, nem tudom, füvet nyírni, vagy mondjuk a konyhába egy 8-10 órát dolgozni. Ö, van, aki ezt szereti jobban, van, aki azt. Ö, nyilván ember válogatja. Öm, én, nekem van olyan ismerősöm, aki csinálta mindkettőt, és például neki a counselor jobban tetszett, illetve van, aki a szuporszat tetszik jobban, ez változó. De, de nagyjából, nagyjából így néz ki. Nem is akarok nagyon belemenni. Holnap akkor megpróbálom összehozni az interjút, és akkor, és akkor nézzük is meg. So I'm uh, here with Ricky, one of the uh, owners and directors of the camp. Thank you for participating in the My video. My pleasure. A um, couple of warm-up questions. Um, so if you can choose anything else uh, besides what you're doing, what would you do? What area would you, would, would you choose? Um, any activity that you would be like a counselor? Or where would you work if you weren't doing that, what you do now? But you know, the original reason why someone goes into the camp business is to be with children. You have to be a good person and you have to love kids and that's what residential camping is all about. Part of this job is um, taking care of the business and taking care of all the issues and problems that come up every day. But if I had my druthers and I could do anything would be on the courts, the fields and the arts and craft centers with the kids and participating with them because they're really a joy. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any favorite camp memory through the years? Like one is like outstanding or something like that? Yeah, I do remember one of our first color wars here, which is a competition that the whole camp participates in, red versus white, our camp colors. And the opening of color war, it was a Star Wars presentation. Mm. And on the zip line, 
in the night, everyone came out and there were flashing lights of a rocket ship actually going down the zip oh, wow. line, throwing out the red and white banners. That to me, I think is memorable. Oh, that's nice. Uh, and through all uh, those years, is there anything specific that you're the most proud of? Like old camp, like... Yeah, you know, I'm asked that question a lot, and we've owned this camp 28 years. It's a family camp, four generations. I'm proud of the fact that my parents were here with us, and my children run the camp now with us, and I have grandchildren here. But in that regard, watching the children grow up here, because mm -hmm. we've gone through a whole generation yeah, now. Yeah, it's like two, two generations. generations. and of campers. So when they started here, they're now in their 40s, and I've watched them become parents, successful people in life, and how what camp experience has created for them to be good people and to pass that stuff on to the next generation. Yeah, that's why, like, for example, us, like, staff coming here and working here, uh, living these experiences and, you know, like, growing, like, skills, like, what we can use in the, like, work and, um, social skills like a, a lot of stuff a lot, a lot of assets that you can use uh, in your next workplace or um, the, the next community it's like the the things that you can learn here is like working here no matter what the um, the the job the position that you're doing so that is why it's like really good for us as well not just for like being a camper and it's like a really good experience yeah because you know 60 days of living here day and night with a large family teaches values that you cannot get inside an office, yeah. inside a classroom, inside wherever you might work. It's the constant interaction with people and with situations and you build bonds and you build friendships. And we tell the motto here at Pontiac is always a friend. You don't have to love everyone because that's not the world, but we teach people to respect everyone. And I see that with our staff, our international staff really exemplifies that because they're from all over the world yeah. and they have different cultures and different upbringings and I see them not only over the 60 days but year after year become friends and they become an extended family as well. Yeah, this is why this culture exchange program is about, that's why we are coming here basically. Yeah. Uh, and you, like partly you answered my next question, it's like why? Would you recommend someone to come here? It's like these for, for these reasons that you can make like bonds, friendships, um, you know, like working. Actually, like um, for example, a lot of us, uh, especially in Hungary, but like Eastern Europe, Europe, is the same that you are working mostly in your country, so you don't have any international experiences. You can work for international company, but it's like stay, you're still staying at home and. Coming here to a whole different country, the, uh, working for uh, uh, in a different environment, for uh, using English as your working language, is like also a, a really good uh, asset. Um, yeah, well, I, you know that is a hundred percent right. You know, coming here gives you a set of skills and a set of opportunities. The first opportunity is you come to a beautiful place. You know. Camps are located in beautiful places. They're in the country. It's a different way of life. The second opportunity is to meet a culture, not only of American counselors, American staff, American children, and a way of life that's in America. The third opportunity is to participate and enjoy what the camp offers you, the activities. Um, next is the people, and as we've alluded to before, the people are really what makes a place. And lastly, the chance to travel as part of that program in the Northeast to go to Boston and Philadelphia and New York and then travel throughout the country. It's, it's an amazing experience. Do you have any favorites? Uh, place if you can just pick one where would you send the guys to visit like well if they have time after camp I think that everyone should go to Washington DC it's a very very beautiful special city locally obviously obviously New York City is the main city of the world and there's so much to do I particularly like Boston which is only two hours from us because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a very 
old traditional heritage city that's very very pretty and there's a lot of history there and um, it's you know so those three cities in the northeast are really where it's at yeah because like our camp is like located here like um, between like New York City and Albany like the state of New York so this is why we recommend that but like you're choosing whatever you like so whatever is closest so yeah I mean we're right between New York camp Boston, Lake George, Albany, yeah, we're like, right in the middle like a of a lot. But there are, there are camps in the Midwest that are 1,500 miles away, up in Michigan, Wisconsin, that have beautiful camps with big lakes. So it all depends upon what your predilection is for yourself. Do you want to see the cities of America yeah. or do you want to see the country of America? Yeah, all Great true. opportunities. Yeah, all true. I think that's, that's a good closure. Thank you again uh, for uh, uh, breaking a little part of your time for us and uh, well, see you around. I found my way, I found my way. Beszéltem már, vagy lehet, hogy beszéltünk már korábban a, a counselor pozícióról. Ugye vannak a general counselor vannak ezek a spe specialistek. Ami azt jelenti, hogy mint ami mögöttem látható, épp tenisz edzés kezdődik, vagy értem, nem sokára jönnek majd a gyerekek. Szóval ők egy ilyen speciális munkát végeznek, ami azt jelenti, hogy ha nincsenek a gyerekekkel, valamilyen sportot vagy ilyen activity csinálnak, ők például ugye teniszeznek, szóval nekik itt kell lenni, illetve van ilyen különböző session, például egy-két órát, és akkor ilyenkor jönnek a gyerekek, mit tudom én, egy ilyen, ilyen csoportos körbe, és akkor utána majd, utána majd váltogatják egymást. És hogyha ezzel végez, akkor utána mennek vissza az ő, ő körletükbe, vagy az ő bankjukba, és akkor megint a gyerekekkel lesznek, és akkor este, amikor nincs mondjuk teniszedzés, vagy ilyen activity például nekik, akkor, akkor pedig újra a gyerekekkel lesznek, és akkor este meg rájuk vigyáznak például. Láthatjátok, ugyanez a helyzet például itt a kosárpályánál, és uh, amit most ugye uh, elkaptunk kosáredzés. Láthatjátok, hogy uh, a counselorok dolga az, ezek a specialist counselorok dolga azért nem megterhelő, tehát uh, azért ott kell lenniük, várni kell a gyerekeket, uh, felkészíteni a, akár most a termet, vagy a pályát az érkezésükre. Uh, és, és most gyakorlatilag nem fogok át elmenni a az összes ilyen területre, hogy elmutassam nektek, mert el tudjátok képzelni, hogy gyakorlatilag mindegyik helyen így zajlik. Tehát akár a, a mit tudom, focitól kezdve van például ilyen vízi területek, ilyen pool, vagy mondjuk a waterpark is ilyen, hogy ott is ilyen felkészítik már ezeket. Nyilván más-más módszerek, de ez nyilván a counselor pozíciótól eltér. A lényeg az, hogy ők ezt a gyerekek felügyelete mellett, vagy azon kívül csinálják. És ez egy tök jó dolog, hogy ilyen lehetőségeik vannak a kis 8-10 éves gyerekeknek is, hogy mindent kipróbálhatnak, és gyakorlatilag tudni fogják, hogy um, miben is jók már így az elején. Szóval az neveltetés szempontjából uh, elég jó. Um, szóval azért látjátok, hogy nem egy megterhelő, tehát nem egy ilyen kemény fizikai munka, de azért több koncentrációt igényel, illetve hát ezt ugye akkor is kell csinálni, hogyha fáradt vagy, szóval nem mondtad azt a gyereknek, hogy menj el aludni, és akkor, és akkor te meg pihensz egy picit. Ennyi van ez a, ez a nevelés, meg egy ilyen edukatív jelleg, szóval mondjuk egy ilyen pedagógusok át tudják érezni, de hát nagyon sokan ugye ezt is tanulják, szóval így ezért elég könnyű. Még egy-két helyet nézzünk meg, hogy akkor mit is csinálnak most a táborban. I'm here with my friend Henry from Australia. 
we're doing this in interview the uh, second time because I messed it up the the settings and I'm not gonna joke <laughs> with your accent again. No, that's alright. Yeah, yeah, so you're here for the third time, right? Yep. Uh, and you are a counselor and a lifeguard. Yes. Um, can you describe what your day looks like? Like days, usual yep. days here? Yeah, so um, so I'm what's known as a specialist here at camp. So it's separated into two you got two groups of counselors. So you have your specialists, which was what I am, and you have general counselors. General counselors spend the whole day with the kids. So they wake up with the kids, they do all the activities with the kids, they eat with all the kids, and then they put them to bed. So that's, they're with the kids 24-7. As a specialist, I have to teach um, fishing as well as lifeguard. So my average day is a wake up and then line up where they do announcements and then breakfast with the kids. Um, I then go back and help clean up the bunk and then I lifeguard mm -hmm. the first two periods watching over lakes and pools and we have a water park here at camp so that keeps me very busy mm -hmm. um, then I have to then go back and eat with the kids again which is just how it is uh, very messy so that's something you look forward to and then three in, in period three and four here at camp I teach fishing so I, um, I get various groups of kids various ages, um, both male and female, for those two periods, and we I teach them how to fish, basically. Mm -hmm. um, then after that, it's back to the kids for dinner, um, and then after dinner they have an evening activity, so tonight the boys are doing square dancing with the girls, so they're not really looking forward to that. And then I help put them to bed, and then depending on whether or not I have duties that night, I'm either off to enjoy or I have to stay and look after kids a little bit longer yeah, but it's is, all good this yeah. is the some like the beauty of the uh, of being a counselor that yeah. you have to uh, you have like so you have to keep uh, keep an eye on them all day yeah you have like responsibility towards yeah, yeah, them yeah yeah so it's like something like uh, kind of a serious job but on the other hand it's like you know like not that um, hard for example like working outside or like no, doing it's good. the like it's really maintenance good. or stuff like that yeah I mean it is taxing I am in the Sun all day um, so that that does sort of affect your body a lot you get a lot more sunburnt than you would normally yeah um, you dry out very quickly but it is a very good job it's a lot of fun yeah um, so how did you hear about uh, this program and why did you decide to come to America and try your luck and living the American dream the American dream. Uh, so my first summer here at Pontiac was 2019 mm -hmm. I was meant to come in 2018 um, off the recommendations of friends and just oh, sort sorry. of looking into things for travel. Um, so I applied, but then suffered a really bad knee injury playing football, so I couldn't come. Mm -hmm. And so 2019, I went through the hiring process again, applied, and I had to put down my three skills. And Camp Pontiac, Alex Armand, reached out to me and he, um, he asked me if I would like to come and work here. And I just said, yeah, you know, it's, you, you don't really have a lot of choice. Um, you can obviously choose to knock it back if you decide, but, you know, sometimes there might not be a second offer. So I accepted it wholeheartedly. Um, got the visa sorted, got my DS form, all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Had to travel to Sydney, which is a six hour train, uh, six hour, yeah, train ride um, in order to get my visa. So it does cost a little bit, but it's worth it in the end. Yeah, it's like, since it's like you're saying it's you keep coming back and it's worth it like yeah. the the trip to get here is like how many hours from home oh like 30 basically Th 30 the whole thing up between 30 and yeah, 40 30 something and like you keep coming back you know like all the motivation like yeah. the stuff that you know like makes you keep coming back yeah and um i mean so it's it's really the people like like the kids are good the activities are fun and the camps are beautiful but you come back for the friends you make and the friends who are also returning and just you know it's, it's the it's, people that make it not the place yeah this place is, is better and better every day because you're meeting a lot of new people that yeah you, you're here with I don't know like let's say the staff is like 100 plus like 150 yeah. or something and you know like let's say 10 of them and by the end of the summer you're friends with like 100 plus people yeah 100% lifelong friendships and um, 100%, 100%. This is like, and you are learning like communication skills in yeah. the meantime, uh, tolerating people, um, all the stuff that you can uh, use in your life later. 
and yeah. not just in like having fun and because that's part of it yeah, yeah actually definitely it's we have a very big staff here and you get two weeks basically to get to know everyone mm -hmm. before the kids come and you know every single person's different you know they come from all over the world we've got people from we've got a couple from canada we've got people from all over the u.s we've got a lot of people from mexico you know, we've got a lot, a lot of people from the UK, but in the UK itself, you know, they're from Scotland, they're from Wales, they're from Ireland, they're from England. And then obviously we have our Europeans, Hungarians, um, as well as, I mean, in the kitchen you guys have got, what, Polish people, you've got Czech Polish, Republic people. Yeah, like, Slovakia, yeah, some Ukrainians. Like, there's a lot of countries represented yeah. there. And then there's people from my side of the world, you know, there's a lot of Australians here. And um, it just gives you such an avenue to meeting so many so many people but also you know the way their lives are the way they go about their lives their interests you know what they do for fun back home that you know you're just not exposed to in many atmospheres and and also like i was talking about ricky exactly about this topic that for example this opportunity uh you're coming here to uh, uh to the end of the world this point of view but yeah, yeah like traveling a lot yep. uh, and working in like an international environment, working yeah. in the US, like where your working language is, for example, for me is English, yeah. which is like, we are not used to that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, for example, people in Europe, we are working in Europe or working yeah, yeah. in their country. Yeah. And coming here, working with international staff, yeah, 100%. When, when you're young, you know, it's like, what an experience yeah. to have. Like, Very eye opening, yeah. It's like when you're going to uh, work somewhere, it's like, it's looking good in your resume yeah and when you have to um, socialize you know like you for example if you have like good English coming here uh, and you're bubbling you cannot yeah. start talking and you you learn to you know um, um, I mean it's it's really hard to tell you because like you're it's, it's really yeah. hard for you the communication but yeah. like part of you like coming like everybody coming here for the yeah for for the job it's yeah. like not not we are not starting on the same level that's what no, I'm saying no no not not at all but but over the summer you we you know everyone improves like that's one of the things i really love is that i have a very difficult accent and when i come to camp i have to tone it down because i know that it's very difficult to understand and it's difficult to understand even when i tone it down but i know from like conversing with the kitchen staff and the the maintenance staff mainly from mexico the kitchen staff obviously mainly from europe you know, they improve so much in their English and it's just the immersion that you have in the culture. You know, everyone you talk to here speaks English. I mean, yeah. none of the staff, very few of the staff speak Spanish. None of the staff outside of the kitchen would speak Hungarian or Polish, you know. So your English just improves out of sight. And I know even talking with, you know, you and Laura and Noemi, you know, three people who've got a lot of experience. Like, every time I talk to you, like, obviously year after year, but like when you come back, the English is so much better and so much better. Like, and it's just from that immersion that you guys get from coming here. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you have any favorite camp memory? Any favorite camp memories? Uh, not really. No. I sort of. I try to cherish all of camp. Um, and you know, it, it's one of those things where you you're gonna get out what you put in. So if you come in, and you put in 100% of your effort, you're gonna have the best summer ever. If you come and you're very sort of lackadaisical don't really try mm -hmm. it's, it's gonna be a bit of a meh summer um, so I try to approach every day happy but I do have memories um, and again it's the people you know like uh, on especially on days off as, as you well know like yeah, you get just, to just hang out with other counselors from yeah, all over the world and just just chilling chill on a boat or you know we what one what, day we what, what sat in it? tubes and we went down a river what, like, what was your favorite day off of all time my favorite day off of all time uh, probably my first summer to be honest with you um, and we had a day off where we went to this tubing place in Connecticut mm -hmm. and it was about an hour and a half drive there there's the so zoom film no no no, that's no, no 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 so this is like this is this massive long river mm -hmm. huge it was like a two and a half hour journey mm -hmm. and you sat in a just a rubber tube with handles and there was about I don't know 60 of us and we all just sat in the tubes and we just floated down the river for two and a half hours. Wow. And it was just, it was just fantastic. Like you spoke to, spoke to everyone. It was just, it was just so chill. It was just so relaxing. It was just a, like the perfect, perfect way to spend a day off. Mm. It was awesome. What's yeah. yours? Mine, who? I, I always liked Boston. Yeah. So like Boston is like really close to us, like two hours. 
and every year they used to send like a, a trip to Boston. Yeah. I, I've been there twice. Uh, all my favorite sports team are yeah, from Boston. Yeah. Um, I, I like the, uh, the the food there. Like the like the, the whole city itself. Uh, it's like a little bit European, a little bit American. Yeah, like very much of, so. Yeah. A lot of parks, a lot of green areas. Yeah. Uh, you know, like university districts like yeah. Harvard and uh, Yale, I think the other one. Yeah. And uh, I also, for example, last year, last year we went uh, rafting. Oh, yeah. That was that was really cool too. Um, I don't know, we were, we were hiking a lot in my first year. Yeah, yeah. So, see, I cannot pick one. It's like... Yeah. It's hard though. It's like it's sightseeing. Very hard, yeah. yeah. So th this is why it's good that you have like day off that you can spend outside the camp and yeah. see these places, not just like being here all the time. And the camp provides the opportunity, yeah. like not just here, like most of the camp does, like around the U.S. That you can spend some time here. What What's the most difficult thing or like the biggest difficulty for you during the day? Oh wow, that's tough. Um, probably fatigue, tiredness. Um, it, it's a long day, and it becomes a long week. You only get one day off a week, obviously. Um, my day off happens to be a Friday. I love Friday. My favorite day of the summer because I get to sleep in. I get to go to bed whenever I want. I take naps during the day. Mm -hmm. I get to hang out with people. Go have some few drinks. Do do some other recreational stuff. Um, but the other days are very tiring. You know, it's a long, long day in the sun with kids. It's a, it's an early wake up. It's a late bed, and you know, you work. It's, it's, you get very little off time to yourself. They do try to give you periods off, but they go like that. You know, it's, it's there and it's done, and then all of a sudden you're back at work, and that can be quite hard for people who are um, not used to it. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's, it's something that gets me every now and then. Um, definitely is. The fatigue and just you know you get to about seven o'clock at night and all you want to do is put your head down for half an hour but you can't you know you've got the kids for another two and a half three that's, hours yeah that's why it's like responsibility and yeah. like a lot of people think that that coming here participating in the project is just for fun yeah obviously obviously it's fun but you have to put the work in it then and because of the work you are getting the experience yeah 100 percent. so it's like it's it comes with the work, obviously. Yeah, yeah, that's oh. it. That's it. You know, like you, not everything's fun. You know, you have to work, but if you, you know, if you do your job properly, then the fun's even better, really. Yeah. Work hard, play hard. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm not gonna rob your time anymore because I, I know that you have to that's go. Right. Too easy, uh, man. Thank you for. Not a uh, drama at all. Thank thank you for the interview and see you around. See you around. Na és ő volt Henry, az Ausztrál barátom. És azért jó, hogy hallgatni embereket, hogy úgy mesélnek az ő élményeikről, az ő kis történetükről. És meglátni igazából, hogy az embereket a, a pozíció mögött. Um, és az azért ő is a harmadik éve van itt, Ausztráliából, szóval neki is azért mindig van motiváció erre, hogy visszajöjjön. Nagyon szeretőle a gyerekekkel lenni. Nyilván, uh, nyilván fárasztó. Um, nagyon sok... Uh, energiát elvesztek, tehát ez az ő pozíciójuknak a hátránya, úgymond, vagy a legfárasztóbb része. De, de ezért, ezért bízlek például olyanok, olyan, olyanokra a gyerekeket, akik értenek hozzá, szívesen csinálják, és a többi, és a többi. Szóval, ha megpróbálok akkor még egy másik, egy, vagy legalábbis két emberrel beszélni, nem tudom mennyire jön össze, azért elég nehéz így összeegyeztetni a dolgokat. Yeah, I'm like that. Cause I feel so good when I. hogy csinálj egy két ilyen sunset shotot záró képnek, de ha már itt vagyok, pont elkaptam itt egy két live gárat, ahogy a pont ilyen water park um, túráik volt, és, uh, és pont a, uh, itt van az egyik ember, akivel akartam beszélni, hogy gyors uh, el is kapom egy rövid interjúra, és, uh, és akkor mindjárt folytatjuk. Hi! So, no worries. So, uh, I'm here with Ashley, uh, my friend from which state? 
Ohio. Ohio, America. Uh, and it, this is your... This is my 12th summer. 12th summer. And you're doing um, lifeguarding, mm -hmm. but you were a counselor. Mm -hmm. So th because this episode is about like counselors and a um, couple of other positions. Mm -hmm. So um, like a couple of um, information about your work. So what do you do now or what did you do as like a counselor before? Okay. If you can. Yeah, of course. Um, so when I was a counselor, um, I obviously spent time with my kids. Um, in the morning, I stayed with them until the beginning of first period, and then I went away and went to the waterfront for about three hours, and then back to them, for, back to the kids for lunch, um, and then back to the waterfront after lunch until dinner, and then after dinner, I stayed with my kids the rest of the day. So you you started as like an expert. Is it how we call expert counselor? They're, they're called. Um, what are we called? We are called specialists. Specialists, yeah. yeah. Specialist counselors. Because like they're like general counselors, right? Yeah. And the specialist was like lifeguard, uh, outdoor adventure and stuff. All like of that. the sports. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. of the activity people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you started doing like only lifeguarding since. Um, twenty fifteen was when I no longer had campers. Mm -hmm. So. Do you have any specific favorite memory, for example, in your camp so far, of all time? Of all, honestly, my, my favorite memory was the year um, that my kids were counselors and mm -hmm. seeing them as counselors, like mm -hmm. they were growing up. So that was like the coolest thing is seeing, like I saw myself watch them and then I'm seeing them do the same thing that I did, mm -hmm. you know? So it was really cool to see that they had like matured and grown up so that's that is honestly probably my favorite mm. camp memory and also like people like i keep asking these questions to everybody and you know like they cannot pick like only one memory it's like constant every year it's like they're like a bunch and you cannot really choose and um it's like it's like the whole camp is like you know you cannot pick just one moment just like the whole through the camp yeah. pre-camp post-camp um and stuff like that um uh if you can choose other position than for example lifeguarding what mm -hmm. would you choose oh gosh any areas sports that's a tough one um honestly it would probably be outdoor adventure mm -hmm. just be i have um i worked at a another camp long 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 time ago and we had we just had a ropes course mm -hmm. um and i did i did run that some so I have a little bit of experience, so it would probably be outdoor adventure. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I did the zip line once, which is in the back, uh, which is really cool. I always wanted to do this high ropes and the wall, but I, I, I either I've I, tried them once in my 12 years, and the zip line I just did last year. <laughs> yeah, it's like you never have either the energy or the time. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. If, it's if, time. if, you, if you have both, is something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not doing your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, all right. Last question. Um, what would you recommend? Or why would you recommend for someone who would like to participate in the project, as a counselor, as a super staff? It doesn't matter. Um, for me, it's all about the experience. So this is an experience whether you are working directly with the kids or indirectly with the kids. It's an experience that you cannot get anywhere else. So I would highly recommend it mainly for that reason, but also like you get to meet people from all over the world, not necessarily just all over like the United States, which was what I thought I was going to be doing. It's I've met people from many, many countries <laughs> and made like, you know, what I think are lifelong friends mm -hmm. you know, from other countries. So I would highly recommend it for those reasons and just getting away <laughs> getting out of your home <laughs> yeah, yeah it's like getting out of your comfort zone especially mm -hmm. for example you know with people that come in here for the first time for example it's like you know like being like uh, for example an american counselor or like um living here that's yeah. obviously different than for example somebody us somebody international coming, yeah I, I i mean i can't relate to that unfortunately although when i did come i did not know a single person here that's that's kind of the same situation um but yeah like like 
you know like for for uh some people are like a lot of people but america is like a kind of a dream place mm -hmm. dream destination mm -hmm. and it's like we are um amazed by that you know like everything is like in the movies and stuff like that <laughs> and you're coming here obviously in a whole new area yeah different circumstances and work is different people are different like it's i'm making the the fourth or the fifth interview or like the video and it's funny that because like everybody's saying the same thing that you're saying like everybody enjoying to spend time with um with the staff and uh, with others and uh, um, you know like the languages and uh, the experience, international experience and stuff like that so so that's why why everybody coming back each year and year and year and year yeah all right uh, I don't want to <laughs> rub your time anymore uh, thank you for the interview and oh, no see you later no. have a good night you too. nice week <laughs> uh, thank you yeah I'm gonna continue in Hungarian so okay. Zárásnak szerintem ennyit szerettem volna, még pedig azért is, mert egy is elég hosszú lett a videó, de szerettem volna ezekkel az emberekkel leülni és beszélgetni, egy kicsit többet meg tudni róluk, illetve hogy ti többet meg tudjatok mondjuk, mi áll egy counselor pozíció, illetve hogy mondjuk akár egy, mondjuk egy igazgató, mennyire közvetlen lehet és mennyire ö, könnyű velük ö, mondjuk beszélgetni, vagy mondjuk időt szakítanak rám, hanem úgy tényleg eléggé ö, ö, zűrös a beosztásuk és nem, nem nagyon érnek rá. De tényleg azért, azért szívesen vesznek részt ilyen projektekbe. Na de igazából amivel szeretném zárni az, az pedig az, hogy azért látjátok, hogy különböző pozíciók vannak ugye a táborban, és um, mindenki más miatt, de mégis ugyanazok az innokok miatt uh, jönnek, illetve jönnek vissza uh, minden évben. Függetlenül attól, hogy milyen, pontosan milyen pozíció, vagy milyen specialitás. De ha már mondjuk ugye a counselor ragadva, ha, ha ilyen pozícióra jöttök, uh, nagyjából tudjátok, hogy, hogy mikre jelentkezhettek, vagy mi, mondjuk a tábornak még az adottságai. Uh, itt azért kicsit mások a nehézségek, mint ahogy hallottátok is, a gyerekekkel, koránkelés. Ezen kívül megvan mondjuk a szépsége is. E, nyilván, amikor jelentkeztek a programba, e, ez amúgy fontos fel, feltétel, hogy nagyon jól tudjatok angolul, mert azért, hogyha mondjuk gyerekek, gyerekekre kell vigyázni, azért egy, hát nem is anyanyelvi, de hogy egy nagyon magas szintű angol azért az fontos, hogy legyen, mert mert itt azért nevelni is kell embereket, szóval itt nem csak elvégezni kell egy feladatot, illetve emellett nagyon nagy felelősségetek is van, mert ugye akire vigyáztok, az valakinek a gyereke, valaki megbízik benned, hogy, hogy, hogy neveld a gyerekét, mint olyan x héten keresztül, szóval ez egy, ez egy másfajta, másfajta energiát követel, mint mondjuk egy support staff pozíció, úgyhogy ha, ha erre jelentkeztek, akkor legalább most már látjátok, hogy, hogy milyen is. Úgyhogy ez a rész körülbelül ennyi volt, a következő részben főként ugye a support staff pozícióra akarok fókuszálni, hát megkérdezek embereket konyháról, karbantartás, talán egy-két embert így a housekeepingről el tudok csípni. De hogy annyi pozíció van a support staffon belül is, hogy így most azt sem tudom mondani, hogy így, vagy általánosítani, hogy mindenhol ilyen lenne. Minden esetre ö, bocsi a hosszú videóért, de legalább, hogyha érdekel titeket ez a téma, akkor ö, jobban tudtok informálódni belőle. Na, de ennyi is volt. Ö, feliratkozás, like, minden, amit szeretnétek. Én Roli voltam. Na, sziasztok!